Tracy Hampton was the sixth juror dismissed from the O.J. Simpson trial after serving four months. Based on the evidence she heard and viewed while serving on the jury, Tracy says her inclination would be to have voted for a guilty verdict. Tracy's account of her experience is it, it told in the March issue of Playboy, along with a five-page pictorial. Uh, when you were a little girl, you were you were aware of O.J. Simpson, right? Yes. And uh, did you remember any of your feelings? It's hard because your feelings, you know, so much has happened recently. Do you remember as a, as a kid your feelings about O.J. Simpson before any of this happened? Well, I knew he was a positive um, figure and that he was a, an excellent football player. Yeah, yes. yeah, and he was a kind of a, in a way, a role model. Yes. And maybe, a lot of people say, maybe the most popular uh, black athlete or maybe even black person. I mean, there was Muhammad Ali, and then when he... Uh, wasn't so much on the public scene, O.J. Simpson. Yes, so he was definitely one was, of the most popular. Yeah, yeah. and an extremely appealing guy. And when you were called for jury duty, you, of course, didn't know what, what it was for, or did you? No, when I was called for jury duty, I didn't know it was for the O.J. Simpson trial until um, a little later. That's when I found and, out. And when did you discover what, because obviously you knew about the double murders and everything, and then at some point you discovered what they were considering you for, right? Um, yes, I believe it was the day we filled out the uh, jury questionnaire, and that was the day that we saw O.J. and the attorneys come out, and um, I was blown away. I said, I can't believe that I'm actually going to be a part of this, or maybe I was going to be selected for this. Did you want to be? Um, I wanted to be on jury duty because I had never been on a jury before, so, um, yeah, you know, that was why I just thought it would be a good idea. And did it, did it concern you that you knew this was going to be a, a, a very highly publicized trial on O.J. Simpson and, and, and being an African-American yourself and another? I mean, did that occur to you that this is a little difficult to, to be involved in something like this, to go back to your own community, or, those, or is that just my thoughts? Did you have any of those kind of feelings? Um, no. When I was um, on the jury, I just felt, you know, I'm going to do the best job I, c I can, and I'm, I try to be an honest person. And I thought I would have made a good juror. And you, you really weren't concerned about going back to your community and your with your bl black friends. And maybe if you had if you had voted uh, guilty, and and he had been convicted, did it concern you at all that this might be a problem for you personally as you went on? Or did, did that thought occur to you during all of that? No, I didn't think about that at all. That's interesting. I just thought I, I'd sit there, I would um, listen to all the evidence, I'd weigh the evidence, and I would make a decision based on how I felt and the facts. And, and knowing what you know now about jury duty and sequestration, oh. <laughs> would, you, would you be a candidate to serve on a jury again? Well, I would like to be on a jury again. You would? Just to complete the whole process. Oh, Tracy, you but have a the lot. Only thing, <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I don't want to do is be sequestered anymore. I really, that was so hard. It, it was just, oh, a terrible experience and for you, me. I mean, you would, be, you would be in your room and you could hear the phone ringing in the room next door in the hotel. Was that Intercontinental? Is that on Sunset Boulevard? Uh, yeah, that's uh, downtown Los Angeles. Oh, in downtown Los yes, Angeles. Yes, not too far from the court uh, building. I see. But, um, yeah, at the beginning of the trial, I did hear a lot of phones ringing because they, they had phones in the deputies' rooms. And um, it just, I wasn't sleeping at the beginning and we, I changed rooms and everything was fine then and then um, other things just went on the whole sequestration just being with a group of people the same group of people day in and day out and just repeating the same thing over and over going to, to court every day sitting there listening to this this testimony and a lot most of the time was, not listening to anything right just being held somewhere just, right yeah it where was were just, you when you were were you in your hotel room most of the time when they were until they would call you to come into the court, because you know weeks would go by and you would, or days, certainly days. Yeah, we'd either be at the hotel. Later on, it got better because we had a lot of entertainment. People would perform for us. We had Jay Leno; he was great, and um, he was wonderful. I really, I think he was my favorite because I remember that day I was kind of depressed, and they said you have to go to this one. They surprised us, and when I went, I had such a wonderful, wonderful. No, where time. was this in the hotel? No, they had a special place that they took us that he performed. And Jay, for us. Jay it wasn't Leno at the showed hotel. up and just did some jokes. Yeah, right? he performed for us. Did he the, do the, jokes? They didn't do jokes about the trial. Um, I know he did a lot of airline jokes, he did and airline. that's what I found very funny. I really like that. Because you had been a stewardess. <laughs> yes, yeah. And then at some point, uh, when you were in your hotel, because you talk, in, in, you, at some point you, you were awakened and there was a female deputy in your room. Right? Yes. Which is quite frightening. <clears throat> well, yeah, it was uncomfortable for me because I remember um, after breakfast, I went to my room and I did some reading, and I kind of dozed off. 
and I remember opening opening my eyes and there was like a deputy standing there. I'm like, oh, you know. What was she and, doing there? Um, she was at the foot of my bed and I really, uh, they say that there was, you know, a maid coming in, a, a cleaning woman coming in and um, the deputy came in to see if I was in there. But I do just remember opening my eyes and there's just a woman like standing in front of me and then she just turns and then she like leaves real quick. And I got up and got dressed and I were went. You dr were you, that's what I was gonna ask, were you dressed when you no, were in No, I was just in bed and I, I just had on some sleepwear. And I got up and just put on some jeans or something and I, um, I went after her. I went to find out what was going on because she didn't give me an explanation at the time. And um, I went after her. I didn't see anybody down the hall. I went down the other hall. And, um, and then she came out of the movie room. And she did say, you know, I'm sorry. And that was it. And then I was still wondering why was she, what, what's going on. And what do so, you think she was doing there? Do you have any idea? Any theory? Um, I, I don't know. But they do say, like I said before, there was a cleaning woman coming in. So When you, when you would go to take a nap, as you, as you just described here, do you have a latch on your door in that room? No, there wasn't a latch on my door. Why not? No. I think just for, for um, I don't know, I want to say for safety reasons, just in case maybe um, they knocked on our door because we get a wake-up call every day, they knock on our door and you didn't answer or something, they could just get their key and open. Yeah, I, I don't on. know, I see safety reasons the other <laughs> way. I mean, I, I, know, but I mean, here am I, a former great athlete, and I've never revealed that to the audience, but kind of a football player and a boxer and everything, and I have a latch on my door. Yeah. And I can't imagine a young woman, you know, alone in a hotel room not saying, I got to have a latch on this door. I can't imagine well, that. Well, I did get a, um, because of that, the woman enter entering my room, there's a, a um, alarm, a door alarm that I carry with me when I'm traveling as a flight attendant. And I started using that just in case if someone did open my door again, it would go off. A door so, alarm? Boy, that's right up my alley. What, <laughs> so what, after what, that. What, what <laughs> like 15 seconds till the break? After what, what, that. Just 15 seconds. What's a door alarm? Um, it's a little object. You squeeze it in between the door, and then if someone opens it, it goes off. Oh, I got to yeah. get me. Get, let's, get, so. get, let's get a half a dozen door alarms. We'll go to a break. Be right back with Tracy Hampton and more about OJ. Be right back. At some point, the jury duty got so stressful that you went to Judge Ito, who I guess, how did you find Judge Ito? <laughs> did you like him? Uh, he was great. Oh, he was just great. I think he did a good job on this, on this case. And um, I really would like to thank him. I really would, because... Um, yeah, ultimately, he, he was concerned for your well-being more exactly. than just holding everybody together. Yeah, and he listened to me. And I really wish at the beginning of the trial that I, I, I had known that I could just go to him with anything because there were, a lot, there were um, several things that I would have just liked to talk to him about and uh, make him aware of from day one. And I really wish that I had known that he was available that to available us at that time. You. Yeah. you know, what was interesting in reading about you, you went and you said you, you didn't like the treatment, I guess, that, that some of the sheriff deputies, who I guess were white, is that right, who were who were, who were taken off the case? Were they white uh, deputies? Um, yeah, or? they all happened to be white. Yeah. What it was was they were too, um, I, I just thought that they were, uh, how can I say it? Um, Disrespectful? They just, we were just monitored. I was monitored too close, too closely, and I just didn't feel comfortable with it. I mean, I, I really, the other people didn't say anything. They were fine with being monitored very closely, but I wasn't. Well, what would and you I, call, what's an example of being monitored too closely? <laughs> oh, um, just pretty much where I'd go. There'd be one right there, pretty much. I mean, it was the same way with everyone, but I just, it's just hard to explain. Well, I just much. felt you some felt of like us were, on you uh, some of us were just monitored a little more closely than others, that's all. Mm -hmm. and, and then with the incident with the woman coming to my room and, and other things, it just made me feel kind of uncomfortable. And mm -hmm. I just wanted to make him aware of it and maybe he could change things. And he suggested releasing these three deputies, that's he all. Suggested just to make me feel more comfortable, that's he, all. And when he suggested that, did you, were you ever concerned that if he got rid of those three deputies it might uh, alienate some other people on the jury and other deputies toward you? Did you think of that? Well, first of all, I didn't know that the other jurors or anyone else would know what had gone on, you know, what I talked to Judge Ito about. I didn't know anyone was going to find out, um, and it didn't really concern me. I just thought I was just doing it just so I could feel comfortable there, that's all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, But I didn't know that it was going to... Uh, to get out. I guess if you go and have a meeting with Judge Ito and suddenly there's three deputies gone, they'll look at what did you say to Judge yeah. Ito. And, and then I remember... <laughs> um, apparently when I went in that day it was it got out to the news media and um, I didn't know at well actually I knew because Judge Ito called me back into um, in there and he said um, you know I have something to tell you part of the information that was part of the things that we talked about um, it's aired 
it's aired on the night. I said, oh, my God. You know, what? <laughs> How would that get out? How would that well, there was some kind of mistake with the, I don't know, I can't explain, I don't know yeah. how it got out, but it did get out to the news media at that time, and it was all in the air, some things that I said word for word, and I just thought, oh, gosh. I just so thought they, people they were going to take So it. if you go in and talk to Judge Ito, there's somebody transcribing everything you're yes. saying. Yes, and it, it got out word for word, some of it to me, and I was like, oh, gosh, you know, what's everybody going to Let's take a phone call. Barbara from New York. Do you, do you have a question for Tracy? Yes, first I want to say I love your show. Thanks, Barbara. <laughs> okay. I was wondering, besides all the stresses you mentioned, Tracy, which were pretty extreme, uh, what are other confrontations between you and the jurors themselves that uh, led to you having an emotional breakdown? And was there, uh, were there actually discussions of the case, even though they were not supposed to be before the uh, trial was completed? Okay, well, um, as far as leading to my stress, um, like I said, there were a combination of things. There was the, um, you know, the sequestration, and then just sitting, the trial was just depressing to me. That added on to it. So there were a combination of things. I can't just say, oh, it was the jurors, but there were a combination of things. But um, as far as the jurors were concerned, there were a lot of people that pretty much ignored me after the three deputies left, which... You know, I, Judge Ito, he was the one that uh, suggested they be released. I just told him I was uncomfortable with the situation. Um, so that there was pretty much, they ignored me. Um, there were other things, that childish things, that I just don't even think are even worth mentioning until I, here. I really don't. But there were things that, that went on that I was totally disgusted with. And I, that's, that just added to my wanting to leave. And when you got home and saw that, that crush of media out there, what do you think of that? You think people should be allowed, to, that many media should be allowed to be outside your house? <laughs> I, I mean, isn't that a law? That, that's a law that I Gosh. question, that you come home, you're leaving because of stress, and here's, <laughs> and it's legal. I, I don't think it should be legal myself. I, you know, I thought coming into this, no one was going to know who I was. That's what they said. You're 453. No one's going to know your name. And um, when I got home and saw those people, I said, oh, geez, I can't believe this. Now everybody's going to know everything about me and what went on. I was just very um, shocked, very surprised, and I was already stressed out. And um, I was, I just, oh. Yeah, just uh, yeah, it's a very, even for O.J. when he went home and he can't step outside his house without a crush of media. Now, of course, he, like, gives an interview at the drop of a... Gail uh, from Wisconsin, do you have a question for Tracy? Yeah. I wanted to uh, ask her about her uh, uh, posing for Playboy, and did she seek them out, or did they seek her out? Okay, as far as Playboy is concerned, um, okay, my, I've been acting for... Right. for quite some time now, right. before the trial. Right. And um, my management, along with Playboy and myself, thought it would be a good idea if I, if I um, posed for them. Right. So yeah. Was that, how, what, was that comfortable or how, how, you'd never done anything like that before? No, I've never posed for, uh, posed before. Right. And um, I had a great time. They made me feel so comfortable and they're so professional. And I just had a wonderful time with that. I and and you know, you know I, I haven't, I haven't seen the spread, but is it, are you okay with that? Uh, there you are, I guess, you know? <laughs> I, I love the pictures. I think they are very um, tasteful. tasteful, and I love the way I look on there, and I think they did a great job. Yes. Rosemary, New York, do you have a question for Tracy? Yes. Hi, Chuck. Hi, Tracy. Um, well, first of all, there isn't a question in my mind, but that O.J. is guilty. And um, so I guess what I'd like to find out a little bit about is what is the, the educational level uh, that, that, that the jury had, both when you were a part of it and, and perhaps later, I don't know how many of those people remained on. I mean, what was their ability to do critical thinking? Um, and, and what is your education level, Tracy? Um, well, I do have a high school education and some college. And I think most of the jurors, they had some college education from what I know. And then s I know everyone had a high school education. I know that much. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we were all just a group of normal people. Just And, you, and, and the, the, you were on for four months and the trial went on, what, for nine months? For nine months, yes. Yeah, what do you think another five months would have done to you? I mean, uh, uh, unbelievable, huh? I mean, just impossible. For me, it would have yeah, been, yeah, yes. Because yeah. I, I'm a flight attendant, I'm so used to um, traveling and yeah. just being on the go all the time. And, you know, I like being busy, and I have such a busy schedule with the acting coach and traveling and all that. And um, just being 
that confinement was just hard for me. And I can't I, imagine I can't. that you're ready to, to serve again. I mean, I'm very, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's amazing to me. You're ready to go back on another jury. Well, I want to complete the whole process. You want to complete it and see yes, what it's like to, to see come what, out. what it's like, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and given what you've been watching now and with the civil trial and all the latest developments since the four months since you left, you, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've been asked this or if you're comfortable with the question. If not, say you don't know. Uh, what do you think? Think the man is guilty, not guilty, or? Well, um, you know, I was on there for four months, right. so if I had to vote at that time, I would have voted for his guilt. But I, I wasn't on there the whole nine right. months, so. Right. So, you know, Do you follow the case I, now on television? Or the you know, now I'm like tired of it. Yeah, <laughs> I keep, really keep am. I want to go on with my life, yeah. and I think that's another reason why I um, decided to do Playboy is because I want to just get out of that, and I want to mm -hmm. go back to my lifestyle mm -hmm. as a um, actress right. and flight attendant. I right. just want to go back right. to my normal right. lifestyle. Right. Well, I hope you do, yes. and you seem like a real nice young lady, and Thank uh, you. I'm gonna really wish you the best. And sorry you went through all that. I can't imagine it. I mean, it's yes. nothing I could go through, especially that latch on the door part. <laughs> I could probably handle anything else. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. It's uh, real nice to meet you, Thank and, you. and, and you good too. luck with good luck with everything. Uh, Thanks. We're going to go to a break and.